What is up guys? Fahir here from awesometoots.com and now that we have everything in place, let us wrap up our player script because we need to add more functionality to the player such as him dying and some other features. Now for that we're gonna take the animation panel and put him right here and we're gonna select the player but before that let me just go in sprites and then player and here we have the fall down animations which are gonna be the player dead animation. So select the player in the hierarchy and here create a new clip and I'm gonna go in animations and then player animation here here it is and I'm gonna call this one player died right so player has died from the right side so we're gonna play that animation and I am gonna put this right here falling down this one right here and this one I'm gonna put it right here something like this let me just go here inside of our animation or actually move the animation panel and select the player so now you see this is what we want to achieve. Now, in regards to the position of the player, I am gonna go on frame 60, so something like this, frame 60, and I'm gonna hit the recording button, set the player at Y, or actually not Y equal to zero, Y will be one, but X will be equal to zero, something like this, and I'm gonna say Y, well, down like this, something like this, and let me see, this animation now. So when we play the animation, okay, this is what we want. So this is what we want. Simply player falling down. It's like when he gets hit, he will simply fall down and we'll play the sound and so on and so forth. So this is what we want exactly. If I go and put this animation panel right here, I will need to create player died from the left side. So create a new clip. It's gonna be player died left and I'm gonna hit enter. Attach the same animation. So fall down, fall down zero one and fall down zero two. And let me just take the clip so something like this. Go back here. Now, what is the catch with this animation? Well, the catch is that we are going to set the player to be at this side. And this is his scale right here. We're going to go on frame 60 now. And we are going to set the player, well, to fall down. And let me just move him down, something like this. And voila, we're good to go. This is for his left animation because when he dies from the left side, he needs to fall from the left side. We don't want him to fall. Well, he dies from this side. So when he is on the left, so he's here and we played the player died right. So player starts falling down from the right side. That's why we have created these two animations. So something like this. So what we need to do now, well, we have the player, when we select him right here, you see in the animator, he has player died right and player died left. As you can see here, died right, died left, here he is. And now we can go into some scripting. So right here on the top, inside of our player script, which is this one right here, below our private bull jump, we need a couple of more variables. So we need a serialized field, which is gonna be our audio source, which is gonna be audio kill to play the kill animation and audio jump. And we also need a serialized field. This is gonna be private audio clip, which I'm gonna call dead sound. And we also need a private bool is alive, which by default is equal to true. This is alive will determine if the player is alive or not. Before we start attaching these components in regards to is alive, you're gonna take all of the code in the update function. And we're gonna test if is alive. So if the player is actually alive, then we are gonna, well, call all of the code right here. And also in the jump function right here, if the player is alive, so is alive, come on, is alive. So if the player is alive, then we will be able to jump in here if not is so excuse me for this one if the player is alive then we'll be able to jump if the player has died then no jumpy jumpy for the player and let us attach these components now so we have these audio sources and the audio clip if we go here 
select our player, we will need to attach two audio sources. So audio source one, and let me just move the script down. Yes, break the prefab, I don't care because we will reconnect it again. Add another audio source and move the component down. So uncheck play on awake for both of these and we will for the first one. So here we have audio source. We are going to attach this sword slash and for the second audio, we're going to attach jump new and we will drag and drop them. So the sword slash is going to go right here. Audio kill. This is the sword slash and jump is going to be under jump. So come on. Why is it not giving me Come on, why aren't, why aren't you scrolling down? Okay, so audio jump is going to be here. And for the dead sound, we're going to play hurt too. So attach these like this and then hit apply so that these changes apply to the pray prayer. Player, player, player. Okay, player, player testing. I can now say player. To the player prefab. So again, the sword slash audio source will go under audio kill and the jump new audio source will go under audio jump and for the dead sound we are going to play hurt too we will also go here and when we jump so after we say jump is equal to true we're going to call audio jump and we're going to say play so that we play the jump sound we're going to do the same exact thing right here in the jump function and that will be that in regards to, well, what we did so far. What we need to do now is that we need to create here void on trigger enter 2D to detect collision between the player and other game objects. And collision 2D takes, or on trigger enter takes a collider, which I'm going to call target, not track it, but target like this. And now we are going to test some things right here. If we collide with some game objects, if we have jumped, so if we have jumped, we are in the air, we are untouchable. We can kill the player. We can actually kill the ninja, enemy ninja. We can kill his shuriken. We can kill the bee. We can kill everything that we touch while we jump. But if we don't jump, if we are not jumped like this, then we will die. But if we have jumped and if the target dot tag is equal to the enemy but we have jumped we are in the air we can kill our enemy so we can say target dot game object dot set active is false and we are gonna play audio kill so audio kill dot play to play the audio kill sound this is if we have jumped because when we are in the air ninja is you know doing that backflip or the flip rotating and then he throws his knife and kills everybody so yeah that's the point of the game so when the ninja is in the air while he has jumped we can kill any enemy but else if we did not jump and our target dot tag is equal to the enemy so if we are not we did not jump and the enemy touches us. We're going to call a function called player died, which we still did not create. So we're going to create it right here. So void player died like this, just so that we have the function for the reference. And right here below, if our target dot tag is going to be equal to the enemy tree, we are also dead and we are going to call player died function so that we will die, of course, and we will never come back and you can come back from the dead to haunt me. Anyways, this is the point of the game. In the player died function, we're going to call here audio kill, so audio kill that clip is going to be equal to our dead sound and we're going to call play. This will change to the dead sound of the player. So clip is the actual clip. This one right here that we have attached. Let me just go here. Come on. Sometimes it doesn't allow me to scroll. So you see the audio clip that is attached in the audio source. We have sword slash for this one. And for this one, we have jump new. Now we also have this hurt or our dead sound. So when the player dies, we will play that dead sound and in order for us to play the dead sound, we, we need to change the clip to our dead sound and then we are gonna play it. Is alive is now false, which means that we are not be able to jump. So will be false. This right here will not be executed. And this right here will also not be executed because, well, we have died and, well, yeah, we cannot jump when we are dead. If the transform that position that x is greater than zero we have died from the right side so we need to fall from the right side so we're gonna say here anim play the player died right 
animation like this. Else, we have died from the left side. So here we're going to say player died left. And voila, we are good to go. Here we're going to call our gameplay controller. So gameplay controller to call his instance to say the game is over to show the game over tab. But we are still not done with that. And we will simply say time dot time scale is zero to stop our game. So what did we do? Well, we created those two animations in this video, which we already saw. So created those two animations, player dead or player died from the right and player died from the left side. And here in our on trigger enter, if we have jumped, which we will determine, you see when we jump, so here jump, we will say jump is true. While that is true and we touch one of the enemies, we will kill the enemy. Because we have jumped, we will kill the enemy. Else, you see here, if else, else, if we did not jump and we touch the enemy, then we will die. Also, when we touch the tree, no matter if we have jumped or not, we will die. So let's test that out. And if I go here, console, clear, let me just lower the volume a little bit because we're going to hear some sounds. Notice now when we jump, we hear the sound. And notice now when any enemy comes here, we can kill, for example, this squirrel. Can we kill the squirrel? No, we cannot because we did not tag the squirrel. So in prefabs, enemy prefabs flag, squirrel is not tagged with the enemy tag. Yeah, it's a good idea to tag them. So B is tagged with enemy. Flag, don't tag the flag. Flag is not important. Squirrel will be tagged with the enemy. Ninja enemy is the enemy. Shuriken is also. And tree will be tagged as the enemy tree. So now we can test it out. So notice now, when we jump and we touch the squirrel or the ninja, only the tree can kill us if we jump. So the tree we're not going to touch. We need to avoid the tree. You see, I have jumped and killed the ninja. So I have jumped and killed the ninja and we heard the sound. You see now when the bee comes close to me, notice now, bam, I have killed it. I have killed the squirrel also. So let's die and see if it's actually working. So yeah, we have died. Now, what is the problem here? As you can see, you see the animation? Well, the problem is that we need to select the player since we set here time scale to be zero. When the time scale is zero, physics calculation will not work. Animations will not work as you just saw, but we can fix the thing with the animation. And in order to do so, select the player and in his animator component, you see the animator right here? You see the update mode is set to normal. So we have the update mode to drop down list set it to unscaled time. This means it will not be affected by time scale. Even if the time scale is zero, the animation will still play till the end. And let's test it out actually and see if it actually works. I'm saying actually too many times, but let's hope that this squirrel will kill me. So the squirrel did not kill me. Yeah, but you see the tree have has killed me, but you see the problem? You see what's the problem? Well, the problem is that our animation is looping. So go into the animator panel, select the player died right, double click it, uncheck the loop time, player died left, also double click it, uncheck the loop time. So for both of these animations, simply double click them, loop time will be checked, you need to uncheck it. Click them, loop time will be checked, uncheck the loop time. Let's test it one more time and hoping that everything is okay. So now we have the player here. We have the ninja enemy. So let's hope that the ninja enemy, okay, ninja enemy is here. And I've just avoided these obstacles. And bam, you see, I have died and I have fallen down and the game has stopped. The animation is not playing anymore, so on and so forth. But we see that everything is working. So starting from the next video, we will add score and the player, well, died panel. So when we die, we will call this gameplay controller instance to, well, end our game and show that game over panel. Until then, Fahir here from awesometudes.com. Catch you guys in the next video.